What I thought I'd do is to show you a few cases where we implement these features. Let's see how well we do. Okay, so here's what this talk is all about. Imagine this, you're looking down the, your microscope and you see something that looks like normal liver. And I'm gonna tell you how do you distinguish between benign liver and malignant liver. If you look down your microscope and you think it looks malignant, that's not what this talk is about. There's a completely different talk for that. All right, so this is the cheat sheet that I carry in my head. There are three sets of features that help me distinguish benign liver from malignant liver. The first is your good old H&E. The second is immunohistochemistry. And the third antibody there, which is glutamine synthetase, I have not put in there for a very specific reason, and we'll get into it. And finally, the iron-free foci, but this applies only to the context of hemochromatosis. All right, so this is the easiest of the lot. More plates, hepatic plates that are more than four cell thick is virtually diagnostic of an HCC. But the question is, how do you measure a plate? How do you measure the thickness of a plate? All right, so you do it by endothelial wrapping. There's endothelial wrapping there. That's the endothelial cell there. That's endothelial wrapping there. That's the thickness of your plate. That's one, two, three, four, five, I'm done. This is hepatocellular carcinoma, easy peasy. And the nice thing about this is that you can do this on a cytology specimen. This is a cell block. There's endothelial wrapping, there's endothelial wrapping. That's more than four plate thick. That is a hepatocellular carcinoma. The cell block has a bonus as well, and that is in the form of a mitotic figure Typically, in a benign liver or in an adenoma, you will tend not to see mitotic figures. So the presence of mitotic figures, but not, while not diagnostic of an HCC, is certainly very concerning of an HCC. This feature is far more subtle, and that is HCCs have increased cellular density. Now, I could explain to you this feature in words until the cows come home, but the reality is this image speaks more than all of the words I could use. And if you'll notice, the malignant one is clearly more crowded, and it's not that because of the nuclei have gotten any bigger. It is because the cytoplasm in the HCC has shrunk and assumed that slightly basophilic look, and that is what gives that most HCCs, the well-differentiated kinds, that slightly blue look. There's another feature here that is somewhat helpful, and that is the pseudogland formation. It is uncommon to see diffuse pseudogland formation in a benign liver. And when you see pseudogland formation that looks like this, that is diagnostic of an HCC, open and shut case as far as I'm concerned. All right. Here's another heart feature, a reticulate stain, the good old reticulate stain. This is what normal liver looks like on a reticulate stain. About half of HCCs show loss of the reticulant framework. And when you see a loss, that is essentially diagnostic of HCC. But remember, look for that positive control, but it is not, it is not that uncommon where the stain fails. If the stain fails, repeat it. And if it fails again, repeat it again. One really important caveat to this rule, when you have a very steatotic liver, the reticulant fibers get messed up. So this rule does not apply to steatohepatic or steatotic livers, particularly significant steatosis. All right, so the stain that I really count on is glypican 3 what you should be seeing is this intense cytoplasmic membrane staining, but often you'll see the entire cytoplasm being positive. Two important caveats to remember with regards to glipican 3 in the context of identifying a malignant liver process. One, some high-grade dysplastic nodules could be positive. So in theory, a non-malignant process could be positive, but in practice, that does not matter so much. 
The other is perhaps the more important of the lot, a significant proportion of very well differentiated HCCs, the situation that you need it the most are negative. So if it's there, it's great. If it's absent, you're out of luck. So let's look at a few cases and let's look at this 84 year old man. Remember, if you have a large mass in an 84 year old man, by definition, this is more likely to be a HCC than anything else. A very low power view. You can't really make too much out of it, except to say that there is no background non-neoplastic liver, which turns out to be a disadvantage. This certainly looks crowded, but I have no normal liver to compare it with. This is looking monotonous, and I was concerned before, and I'm even more concerned now. Now I'm seeing a lot of pseudogland formation, and so I'm even more concerned. And the glipogan 3 was essentially negative, except for this little area. This is pathetic. This is negative in my book. No help here. Remember, I promised to talk to you about glutamine synthetase. Here's glutamine synthetase. It's diffusely positive. Now that is concerning for HCC, but you will remember that hepatic adenomas can also be positive for glutamine synthetase. So take this. I wouldn't say with a pinch of salt, perhaps with two pinches of salt. Oh, but this is really very helpful. Now, I wouldn't say this is the most perfect example of loss of reticulant framework, but you'll agree with me, there is some loss of reticulant framework, and this is the best ancillary test I have. I am going to cling to this. This is, in my book, very, very helpful. All right, so let's tally what we have, right? So I think there's monotony. You may think it's subtle. I think there are thickened plates. You may think it's subtle. You, I see a significant loss of reticulant fibers. It's somewhat subtle, I agree, but definitely helpful. I'm going to hang my hat on that. The glutamine synthetase is helpful. Remember, not in itself diagnostic. I think the age is extremely helpful. A large mass in an elderly male is very, very helpful. All of this, I feel fairly comfortable that this is an HCC. I'll sleep fairly well at night after I've called this HCC. All right, another case. I'm not going to give you any history, but clearly cirrhotic. The nodules surrounded by fibrosis. So I'm thinking HCC if there is anything atypical here. Yes, some crazy bile ductular proliferation that's clearly benign. That certainly catches my eye. This catches my eye. And why does this catch my eye? Because I think it looks very crowded. Crowded compared to what? Crowded compared to the background benign liver. This is the cirrhotic liver nodule. And it is very helpful to compare the malignant glands with what you think it's benign. And you'll agree with me when you see this, it looks very crowded. And again, it's not that the nuclei have gotten much larger, it's just that the cytoplasm has shrunken. And remember, I've taken this at the same magnification. And this time, I won the lottery. Look at that reticulant stain. It's completely lost. That in itself is diagnostic of HCC. Ah, but that important question, did the control work? And the answer is, yes, it did. And by Jove, I must have done something right. I believe in karma. Look at that glipogan 3. It is diffusely and strongly positive. Any naysayers out there, I believe there are none. This is HCC, period. All right, so let's look at the evidence for hepatocellular carcinoma. Crowding, definitely. Thickened hepatic plates, not there, but this is not uncommon. Many HCCs have a very solid pattern. You simply don't see plates, no problem. Loss of reticulin, oh my God, this was so helpful. And glipogan 3, oh my God, this was the most helpful feature. There is no doubt that this is hepatocellular carcinoma. And it's important as you go through these cases to add each of these features. So for example, I put heavy emphasis on these two features. And of course, as you well know, the heaviest emphasis I generally put is on an H&E stain. Well, let's take a very quick look at this case. This is the low power view. 
This I can assure you is the normal liver. Here's the tumor. A low power view, again, relatively low power view. You can see a fair amount of steatosis, right? So here's some fat, and perhaps there's a little bit of crowding here. Let's take another look, though. And as often the case, I like to compare what I think is the normal liver, and this is normal liver, with what I think is the neoplastic liver. And you'll notice that there is definitely some crowding here. What was interesting is that one of my colleagues, you know, all of all of our practices have people that are more malignant and people that are more benign. One of my colleagues just calls HCC outright without any special stains. Now that's not me. I am aggressive, but somewhat conservative though. But I would agree with this diagnosis. This is the steatohepatitic variant of HCC. These can be very subtle. So lesson here is beware of these subtle steatohepatitic HCCs. Do not mistake them for steatohepatitis. One final case, this was in a cirrhotic explant. Here's the nodule, it certainly caught my eye and it measured 15.9 millimeters. And there were certainly areas where the nuclei looked a little more crowded. These were very, very focal. You can see that there is no crowding in most of the nodule. Crowding compared to what? Good question, I'm glad you asked. Crowding compared to the background cirrhotic nodule. Compare the cirrhotic nodule with the atypical nodule and tell me, isn't this crowded? And there was certainly portal tract or portal tract-like structures with bile ductules in the middle of this nodule. Does that dissuade you from calling it an HCC or a high-grade dysplastic nodule? The answer is a resounding no. You can see portal tracts in the middle of an HCC. Reticulant stain, I did it, but intact. Did it help? Nope. Focus. Does it mean that I won't do a reticulant stain on the next case? No, I'm going to continue to do it. But God bless that glipocan 3 stain. But again, notice how focal it was. In fact, the glipocan 3 was specifically positive in those crowded areas. God bless the reticulant stain. All right, so let's put our evidence for hepatocellular carcinoma. There was definitely crowding. I did not show you the thickened hepatic plates, but it was very subtle. I wouldn't count on it. The glipocan 3 was definitely helpful. Well, I call this a very well-differentiated adenocarcinoma. If you call this a high-grade dysplastic nodule, I would not fault you. I would not unfriend you on Facebook. I think the distinction between very well differentiated HCCs and high grade dysplastic nodule is extremely, extremely difficult. In many clinical contexts, it has no significance whatsoever, but that will be a focus of another talk. I know I've had some requests asking me for that talk. I promise you I will deliver. And as always, thank you for listening. I do appreciate your support. Thank you and good night.